This is where you're going to start your journey towards real, old school and old man functional strength and also towards real ancient warrior strength. Warrior strength of wielding different type of weapons, swords and maces and clubs. And this, uh, this entire method has principles on which it is constructed. And the, one of the first and most important principles that we have here is this grip first. And why this grip first? The very first time that me and even Samoli we start to train with these different objects such as the steel maces and the wooden clubs and the, even the steel clubs, the first thing that we noticed was the effect on the forearm muscles and on the grip strength. That was the, the strongest impact that any type of training has ever made on our forearm development actually. So we realized that this was a huge missing link and it is a huge missing link uh, at, actually for most people because most people almost consciously try to avoid training their grip, training their forearms. You don't see many people doing forearm curls, uh, wrist curls or extensions at the gym or doing any type of other training either. You see actually the opposite. You see people who use it utilizing wrist wraps, uh, people who utilize, try to utilize techniques of of training where you actually would utilize the least amount your grip you don't because it is often actually seen as something that is on the way of the other type of training that you're doing if you're training your back for example you're training your chest you want to minimize your grip uh, so you could best target on other areas our approach is completely different it is the complete opposite to the approach that you see a lot of people having we have the grip first principle. This means that the grip will get trained with nearly every single exercise that we are actually doing, uh, doing in this Iron King method. It will get trained and not only will it, get, will it get trained, it will get trained extremely well. The mazes, the clubs are specifically, they are one of the, the most usable tools for functional grip strength, for very, very well-rounded grip strength. And why is this uh, even important? Would you must understand that Yes, if we talk about functionality, where does really, really, really begin from? You know, if we talk about full body movement, we can talk about the legs and the rooting and all of this. But this is the, the legs development and core development is something that people recognize. Then we come to the arms and the fingers and the rhythm grip, the entire arm area actually. People don't really realize that that is also a very key part for performance. You don't, you cannot grab onto anything. You cannot, like, grip, what is grip? Grip means that you, you, it's your way to connect to the objects around you, to the objects, to the world, to the other human beings around you. Without the grip, you will have nothing. And grip is not only grip like this way. Grip is also full body squeezes like this way, squeezing your arms together, pulling them towards yourself. That is also a grip. Grip is also pinching like this way in your fingertips or like, like a, a so even like this way in the finger grip. And then we of course, of course you have this more traditional just gripping like this way. So there's multiple forms actually grips that are extremely functional in interacting with the world. That is your connection to the world. That is how you, you contact and, and create the bond with the world. You have to grip the world, the objects around you. So without this strong grip, you really have almost nothing. And it makes really no sense the way that people approach uh, the gym training that they try to minimize the grip. The thing is that the, the, the more you try to avoid it, the weaker it will get. The we uh, and the more you start to use it, the stronger it will get. And the great thing about this is that after you utilize these mazes and clubs, which have a very, very thick, for example, bar, the thick handle that you grab, then grabbing these regular barbells or dumbbells will feel like nothing. So you can really get past this kind of threshold of feeling that you have a weak grip or weak forearm or you don't like that your, your arm is too like a, a thin. Like this, this will be all be vanished with the kind of training we're going to be doing here. So grip is absolutely essential for functional performance. And that is, like I said, every single exercise pretty much will be training the grip in the Iron King method. There are a few exercises that don't like squatting, for example. So then our second principle in this method is the internal frame. So the old school bodybuilders had wisdom that is nearly completely gone from the modern bodybuilding style of training. And this was that the body was actually built from the inside out. It meant that you would, you would build an internal frame, a structure within your body. And this happened through ribcage expansion and breathing exercises. 
these people understood that the maximal external development, whether it's the muscle mass or even the ability to produce force and strength, it has to come from the inside. The all external achievements are the manifestation of your internal strength and your internal capacity. And this is something that we're going to be specifically training with multiple different exercises, uh, old school bodybuilding exercises that are kind of buried under the many, many years of, uh, well, modern type of training. So we're going to dig those out and I'll show them to you so you can get some amazing results with this type of frame training. The other factor with this internal frame is why it, to be, why it really to be drained is it truly affects everything. The old school the, or the bronze era, silver era bodybuilders, even golden era bodybuilders were still doing this type of exercises because they knew that that gave them not just the aesthetics, the frame of the body, but it also maximizes, maximizes their muscle mass, their hormones, their testosterone, their posture, the confidence, and also even your vital capacity, your health. You will get this kind of a zeal, vigor. Like once you start to practice this, you will notice like a very, even like a nearly personality change in impacts can be uh, witnessed once you start to build up this internal frame. It's a dramatic effect on your overall uh, spirit and, and the, the, the aura that you're giving to the world. So that is a huge part of this method. The third important part here is the odd lifts. So odd lifts, weird lifts. <laughs> this is how the lifts were called uh, back in the you know, early 19th century. And what does it mean? People were doing odd lifts. They were doing different type of almost like a stunts with weights to an extent. But they were also very, very beneficial and usable exercises, strengthening exercises, where you're going to be in a little bit weird angles with your body. So we, these people, like 100 years ago, they had no, absolutely no rules and these limitations that the people nowadays have about arching their back, rounding their back, side bending their back. There was no such limits. And the, as a result of this, these people got strong in every single articulation that was humanly possible. And they were lifting like incredible amounts of even weights in that, in those uh, lifts. So we're gonna be, we're gonna have exercises for the back. We're gonna have exercises. We're gonna be rounding our spine, even the lateral bending, like the the very famous bent press. You need to get strong in all of these angles, and you must understand you you can get strong strong in all of these angles. There's no limitations. Of course, it requires a smart and a, and a, a good wise approach. Mm, just to, to how to progress with this kind of exercise and how to approach it, not using, for example, too much weight. And all these methods and techniques will be shared so you will get results in this type of different angles. You will get strong in all these positions. You will get the support. This is also where you're going to be applying the internal frame. And you're also going to be applying the grip train, your grip strength. It's all going to be applied in the actual odd lifts. Then you will notice the big difference on creating support and having the endurance in your grip. So one last thing what we're actually going to be utilizing here, I want to lay them down here. So we, we, have the, we have the clubs. We have clubs. So we have steel clubs and the wooden Indian clubs, both. And then we have the steel maze. So steel maze we're utilizing. Steel maze is a very much a longer handle in it and the, all the weight is on the top of it. Uh, we have the steel maze. We also have the we also have a sandbag. So sandbag is amazing for creating this kind of squeezing force with your body. The squeezing full body gripping strength actually. This is what, I'm gonna, what I, we're going to be utilizing that for. And also even sandbag training contains uh, different type of angles, you know, it is partially, it is odd lifting. You can also consider it that way. And the final thing that we actually have is the old school bodybuilding. So, old school BB bodybuilding. And this one contains also training with the, uh, uh, what is this, D dumbbells and barbells. And we also have have space here. We have the rope climb. And I'm going to put here also the rings. So we have even training with gymnastics rings that is very special training 
uh, for the grip also, the false grip and having this huge strength in your wrist flexion. So we're utilizing actually multiple methods here that, and the specialty is really in, in the combination here. But what do you, what you want to understand that you don't have to try to master every single thing of these immediately. For instance, I started with the steel mace here. This is what I started and I trained very, very long time with just the steel mace, getting unbelievable results. From there, I then moved on to the, the clubs. So I got myself Indian clubs and this actually imp uh, improved my steel mace training even further. From there, it was then uh, kind of this and that. For sandbag came uh, also there, old school bodybuilding, of course I had already done. I started to do rope climb also at some point here to gain, this was to gain even more uh, grip strength also that I noticed uh, that the benefits from the clubs and, uh, clubs and the maces and then the rings also was something that kind of I went back to my roots, started to train muscle ups and the force grip stuff. So these all can be really practiced one by one. You're going to get amazing results even just practicing one of these. But this is like because there are methods that have Mace training, there are methods that maybe have some sandbag training, maybe methods that have bodybuilding, but there's no method that would really combine all of this together and, and take the most important principles, the internal principles, not just the external principles and, and, focus, uh, and principles that focus on the weight or the repetitions or something like this way. No, these are uh, all included in this method and in a way that actually really teaches you the essence of these training styles. So. This is the Iron King method, the method where we really develop the grip in almost every single exercise, we emphasize the grip and we build up the internal frame that's going to maximize your potential, your true potential can come out only by maximizing your internal frame, the external everything outside of you is just a manifestation from the internal strength. And then we have this odd lift, so we don't, we're not afraid of any angles. Uh, that can come in training. We can get strong in all of them. The one last mentioning here that is actually related to all of these here is the not shying away from uncomfortable training. Because the truth is that you're going to feel probably pretty uncomfortable in your palms. Even maze training will cause some uh, like, a, like, what is this called? Abrasions in the beginning. If you're going to be doing rope climb, it's, it can be very, very painful. If you're going to be doing uh, Scherzer squats in the old school bodybuilding, it's going to pressure here on the elbow. There's going to be exercise that's going to cause some pressure in your body. And it's totally fine for you to feel uh, weakness. It is fine for you to feel uncomfortable feeling, even feel like you don't want to do this. But it's not fine for you to act on those feelings. We cannot change how we feel, you know, if you're weak, you're going know, to feel weak, that's just how it's going to be. But what you, can, what you can have an effect on is do you act upon those feelings or not? So you need to get a little bit raw, a little bit harsh, a little bit real like uh, old school with this method. Like don't, uh, don't shy away from, from these uncomfortable feelings or, or having uh, some, some pain in your palms. The fact of life is that the skin gets thicker. You know, our skin, skin can get much thicker than you even can believe. We can grow real calluses, right? And you, the more you hammer the steel or the iron, the harder it gets. And the same way your body will be forged with these methods. Same with, as with almost any kind of training. There is a threshold you need to get past. So that's it. That's right now all about the Iron King method. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you definitely experience this this very holistic strength increase throughout your body, through that internal frame to the, your real fingertips that you have in yourself and all of these different lifts you will get some very very new dimensions into your body. So here, the Iron King method. Enjoy!